On this episode of Mighty Car Mods, we're going to show you the ultimate way to modify one of the most ultimate performance vehicles ever made. What? That's a Honda Civic. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. We've got another Honda Civic here. Why? Why? Why are you about to watch one of the biggest, most epic builds on a Honda Civic anywhere on the internet and why do you love them so much? Why, Martin? What? Uh, because they, you can just do so much with them. You can turbo them. They, they, they handle great. The only reason that anyone likes a Honda is because of the B16 engine. That's the only reason. This doesn't have a B16. It's got a D16. D stands for... <laughs> That's not a B16. That, my friends is a K24. That's right people, after years of planning and acquiring disgusting donor vehicles, we're going to be jamming a K-series engine into this super clean Civic that we got off a of granny a few years ago. We already manual swapped it, but it was too good to leave slow and boring. So what is the best engine for one of these? It is certainly not that one, it's a K24. But where do you get one, and are they cheap? The answer is Sprongle and yes, and no that's not a sex move, it's the name of a mate who lives in the Blue Mountains and doesn't wear shoes. In the not too distant past, we bought a Honda Accord from him for the sole purpose of ripping out its still beating heart. What a piece of shit. <laughs> Look at it. Sprongle's car arrived to us in a pretty sad state. The inside of this thing was absolutely disgusting. It turns out that it sat on the side of the road for quite a while. It is absolutely grot, but apparently the engine's good. Is it all from the steering wheel? Thanks to a non-functioning window, enough moisture got in to grow more mould than an abandoned jockstrap washing pile. It's absolutely feral. Lucky for us, we only need the mechanical bits and the rest of it can go through a shredder to be turned into a Kia Carnival or some other Honda. I'm not sure which is worse. That is why we're here, people. Just that. For some reason I still can't work out. If there's a Honda in your workshop, heaps of people show up to help. Is it because they feel sorry for you? Is it because they're too embarrassed to buy their own Honda, but secretly they want to work on one so they help you instead? It's like the dogging of the car world, except with way more bearded men and spanners. We're going to drop the engine out of the bottom and most of the suspension will go in the bin. Our panels that were definitely not scratched will too. Yes, I know you probably needed that guard, but you didn't hit up Sprongle eight months ago, so you missed your chance. The next stop for the car is to be shredded into a thousand pieces, but the engine is staying with us. Although you can use the Accord gearbox, we're going to get one out of a newer Civic, which has more suitable ratios and a limited slip diff. With the engine on a stand, we can start ripping off everything that we don't need and working out what parts we're going to need to make this swap happen. At this point, you could tear down the whole thing and spend mega bucks forging it, turbocharging, going high comp, or doing a smorgasbord of performance mods, but what this engine has going for it is capacity even in stock form. 2.4 litres of displacement plus VTEC means this thing will make enough power to be an epic street car without spending crazy money on the engine itself. So it is a budget engine in an expensive Civic. We're probably going to throw some cams at it to wake it up a little and we're going to use some of the awesome aftermarket parts that are out there to make this swap quick and efficient. If you still aren't convinced that this is one of the best performance engines out there, you only need to search the interwebs for seconds and you'll find that these things are being swapped into every kind of car imaginable. In stock form at 200 and something horsepower, right up to four figures with turbos in race cars. I can't wait to see how this thing goes in our Civic. We've got a few mates who are going to help us out, including some that have travelled from the other side of the world. We pulled this out of an Accord, you put it in there, how much extra power are we getting? Like 70 kilowatts, 80 kilowatts at the wheels? Double than what it makes, yeah. Double? Yeah, easily. I'm just going to ask the question that everybody's wondering at home, will this fit my Honda? Sort of, it will. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> All right, let's get this um, 16, throw that in the bin, put that in there. Let's go. Marty, let's go. Nothing brings me more joy than stuffing powerful motors into cars that never came out with them, transforming them from boring everyday runabouts into mad performance cars. This D-Series is one of the cleanest I've ever seen, so we'll probably recycle it and use it as a base to build a forged motor for our D16 Turbo Civic we've also got. Our job now is to completely clear out the bay of any single overhead cam rubbish to make way for our K-Series engine. 
We're going to drop it all out the bottom so we've got to remove the mounts, the drive shafts, plus all the plumbing and electrical stuff that's connected to the engine. We're going to remove the front bumper and the headlights as we'll be doing cooling mods later on as well. The D-Series. <laughs> I can't think of D-Series now without thinking of... Anyway, it's about to be released from its home. So we've disconnected everything on the top. Uh, we're going to take some engine mounts off and then we're going to lift it up on the hoist, roll a heavy duty table underneath and then lift the car up and away and leave the subframe of the engine there. So we have to make sure fuel's disconnected, cooling, electrical, all that sort of stuff. I'm just doing the throttle cable and we're good to go. Where do you draw the line when it comes to purity? If you stuff a massive modern engine into a classic car, does this actually wreck it? And are all the sins forgiven if it's a Civic? Because there's lots of them or because they're cheap? Is there a specific time frame or an age of cars when it becomes okay to mess with them? There are many philosophical pools of thought to swim in, but what I do know is that this Civic in its current form would get absolutely chopped by a stock i30 or a base model Golf. And let's be honest, that's just embarrassing and it has to change. When you have a Honda, you also end up with a lot of friends. And I've made some new friends, a particular friends from the other side of the world. This is Brian from Hasport. I made it. Good on you, Brian. <laughs> Brian bought us some goodies. This man makes mounts to mount K24s into EK Civics. That's all you need to know. Let's do it. Let's do it. So Brian is like the godfather of all things Honda and all things particularly K-swaps with some of these. Brian, can you tell me what these are and what they do? This is the EKK2 mount kit, which is designed for putting the K-Series engine into this EK chassis. It works with the K20A, the K20Z, the K24A, and actually with the right bracket, it'll work with the K24Z as well. So uh, it's designed for uh, basically getting the engine in there and getting it at the right height. So uh, those two blocks have different heights. So these mount kit is set up with like dual height. Mm -hmm. So you can, Put the car, put the engine in the engine in the engine bay, and get to the right height so that the header fits the same, regardless of whether you have a K20 or K24 intake manifold turbo kits. Oh, uh, so if you want to do that, <laughs> maybe one day. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, we've been making these. Uh, gosh, probably since 2003, I believe, wow. is when we did the first one. Awesome. So, yeah. People have been stuffing the wrong engines into Civics for decades in pursuit of power. Turbo technology, fuel quality and engine management have made power one of the easier things to improve on, but they can all cost big money. Throwing a more modern and powerful engine into your car gets complicated when you have to make engine mounts from scratch, particularly when it's front wheel drive. That's where parts like Brian's come into play. For around a thousand Australian dollars, you get billet engine mounts, bolts, brackets and bushes to mount the engine securely in exactly the right spot. Then you just need to adapt your drive shafts, exhaust, plumb and wire the car and you're off. We're also going to be using a bunch of off-the-shelf parts from Hybrid Racing to make everything else work, including gear shifter, radiator, plumbing, hoses, coolant, power steering, and just about everything else. Laid out in front of me is a bunch of parts that represent hours upon hours of R&D work. People who have invented parts from scratch so that we can do a job like this. So you could probably make all this or somehow adapt factory stuff to make it work, but it's gonna take you a lot longer. So what this represents is a time save. So in just a couple of days, we'll be able to convert that car from D16 to K24 using a whole bunch of stuff. Now, I got an email a while back from Hybrid Racing who were in, a, in America when they saw my yellow Civic and said, hey, we make a bunch of parts. Is there anything you'd like for it? The car was finished, so I didn't need it. So I replied recently and said, actually, and here it is, they delivered a whole bunch of stuff, which is really, really cool. So we've also got some cams as well, which is exciting. Uh, we got all these little fiddly things that make it possible, adapter harnesses, clutch lines, charge and earth cables, like just everything you can imagine. Plus we also have a bunch of stock OEM Honda stuff that we're gonna use to make it work better. So we're gonna put this oil pump into our K24, which adapts it, makes it work better for a bunch of reasons you're about to find out. We've got a shifter box, we've got new radiators, we've got a skunk intake, similar to what I've had on my Civic in the past as well. Of course, we've got Brian's awesome gear here. And as we move along, we kind of go into the finishing stages and of course a Haltech to make everything work. But we also have a harness so that most of this stuff will just plug in. So there's basically no fabrication, except maybe joining the exhaust together, which I think is incredible and does represent all that time that someone else has put in so that you don't have to. So that's all the stuff. Now, as you know, when you have a Honda in your shed, People just show up out of nowhere. So a whole bunch of mates are coming over, give us a hand to throw all this stuff into the car. But before we do that, we have to get our K24 up to spec with some nice new sweet factory parts.
This here is the VTEC solenoid. This is what gives you all the lag and none of the boost. Instead of a turbo, you can just get this little tiny thing. It's all you need, right? Is that right, Brian? That's right. He said it. I mean, I said it. There's two jobs to do here that are way easier to do with the engine out. One is to swap to a K20 oil pump. It deletes some balance shafts which saves weight and also allows the engine to rev higher. The second is a set of cams made by Drag Cartel which allow us to use our stock valve train but will help the engine breathe a little more up top. All of this is going into an otherwise stock K24 that's already done a quarter of a million kilometres which we got out of a car that we paid 1500 bucks for. We'll throw some service parts at it like tensioners, seals and gaskets. While they're not performance enhancing in any way, it makes sense to do these major service items while it's all really easy to get to. The oil pump assembly requires a little bit of grinding to make it fit the engine, but otherwise it all just bolts into place. Then we can reseal the bottom of the engine and I can give Brian a hand installing the performance cams. Our first big job today is to put the engine back together and we are going to be installing some aftermarket cams. Now on an LS engine, obviously you can make loads of power. Is it the same on a K series? How many extra VTEX are we gonna see? Yes, we're gonna see. <laughs> the, uh, this is three lobe VTEC just like your B16 is and it will, this particular set of cams will actually result in about 15 to 25 more horsepower. Wow, that's decent. Yeah. Have you seen my B16B mini series? I have absolutely seen your VTEC. <laughs> okay, yep. what did you think of seeing someone like me working on something that you know so well? Because right, this is me being schooled by the VTEC Academy in person. Um, was it disappointing to see someone like me try and fumble around an engine while you screamed at your phone saying, no, you don't do it like that. <laughs> you actually did a really good job. And I thought, I thought that I, I love the way you guys do things here at Mighty Car Mods, the way you guys explain stuff. You did a fantastic job. Oh, and that, that's a difficult swap. That, yes. Yeah. You know, on a scale of one to 10, this is a five, that's a 10. Yeah, well, a massive shout out to Miles Stinton for helping with that one because yeah. he's, um, he's, the, he's the mini dude, he's great. So um, I'm gonna be apprenticing with you today. So what's first? Tell me. Okay, first we got these drag cartel cams. We're gonna be putting these in. We need to assemble them with this special 45 degree VTC, which allows us to not over advance it so we have problems. And uh, so we need to put it all together, throw it on there, put the timing chain on it, uh, torque everything up, and then put it all back together and we can uh, put the intake manifold on and then take it off the engine stand. Amazing. For the rest of this build, can we agree that instead of using horsepower or kilowatts, we use VTEX from we now on? VTEX from now on. So we're expecting to get an extra 15 to 25 VTEX with these. Absolutely. Great, let's <laughs> install them. All right. We aren't using the power of a filthy turbo to make this car fast. It's absolute raw unicorn farting VTEC purity that's gonna make this thing become the monster that we truly hope it will be. Now, did we mention that we asked Brian to come halfway across the world to help us? And he actually agreed. If that doesn't say amazing things about Honda people, then I don't know what else could. And if you get the chance to be in the room with an expert in any field at all, absolutely take it. You never know what you'll learn, how it will inspire you, or how it could change your mind. Even if it becomes a love of front wheel drive Econa boxes that I used to chop in my S13 in the 90s. But once this particular Civic's finished, I don't think I'm gonna be chopping this at all. This is going to be freaking epic. You might call this a spring, but this here is actually a lost motion assembly. I'd explain what it does, but I don't exactly know. What I do know is there's meant to be eight of them inside the engine. What I also know is one of them's in my hand, which means only seven of them are in the engine, which means everything that we just did, we will pull it all off, put this in, and then do it again. When you're working on cars, sometimes mistakes happen, and a mistake like this is best to find now rather than when the engine is back in the car. When you're doing engine and valve train work like this, Torque matters, and if we get it wrong, 
then the cams may not be held in properly or can end up too tight which will cause excessive wear. A torque wrench is your friend and luckily the specs are easy to find. We're replacing many of the service items while we're here and cleaning things up as we go. So we ran into a little snag. Our timing kit doesn't come with any seals. I didn't know, it came with like the guides for the chain, but it doesn't come with any seals, and this seal is cracked. So rather than put this back in with a completely hardened up seal that is gonna piss oil, uh, we're just gonna try and get one, because before we put this on, it seems like the smart thing to do, but it's gonna slow us down. We're using a subframe and steering rack out of a different Honda, as it all just fits nicer with the K24 engine. Benny and Pauly have volunteered to repair and upgrade our steering and suspension components while it's all out on the bench. This was dragged out of a wrecking yard with unknown kilometres on it, so it's a huge time saver to do this now rather than later. We're also upgrading to a white line adjustable sway bar on the front with new drop links, and we'll also end up doing the rear later on as well. This here is a subframe and steering rack from a DC2 Integra that's got a bunch of tasty mods which allows, it allows everything else to work and exactly. fit inside our Civic. So we have uh, some new white line sway bars on there, some new uh, links on there, we've also got new tie rod inners and outers, new jointy things and new arms and we've cleaned up any of the rust and crap that's on it. This is now going to go into the Civic which allows us to install our K24. I wonder if this will fit no. my Honda. It's not my Honda. Now's a good time to give the engine bay a bit of a clean up, then we can lift the subframe up into the car and bolt it into place. Of course, the magic hot source of getting your K-swap swapped is both the engine mounts and also the engine brackets. These ones here were made by our good friend Brian from Hasport. Can you tell me how this system works, what it does and why it's so magical? <laughs> it's magical because when Honda made this car originally, they had the engine on one side and the transmission on the other side, and then they decided, for whatever reason, to swap them. So they started spinning the engine backwards. So what wound up happening is in order to get it to fit, we had to make brackets in order to hold the mount. So it wasn't just a matter of making new mounts to attach to the old brackets. Yep. We had to just do everything. Okay. So uh, we have rear mount with a rear bracket. Uh, we have the would be the left-hand side. I want to say driver's side, but that's yeah, the yeah. way it works here. You guys drive yeah. on the wrong side, but anyway. There. And this actually comes in two flavors, depending on the transmission you have. Yep. Uh, and then we have this for uh, your driver's side. Okay, now tell me this, though. So on each of these, there's two mounting positions here. What's the deal with those? Why is yeah. there two? Why isn't it just one for one. everyone? Well, it has to do with the fact that the K20 and the K24 have different size blocks. So right, okay. Are, yeah, so... Oh, two different mounting positions mean that you can close your bonnet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, basically, you want to have the head in the same place because the header fits the same way, exhaust, intake manifolds, turbo kits, yep. all that stuff. So we try to keep the head in the same place, and we just let the lower part of the engine you know, shift depending on which block you have. How much time and energy goes into creating something like this? Because for me, I can buy the things and go, yes, it works, but often with items like this that might appear simple and utilitarian, what you don't really understand is the time that goes into the design, the dimensions, the angles. So can you explain how much effort goes into creating this? Yeah, I mean, we've kind of trimmed the uh, process down now, so it takes me basically a day and a half, two days in order to design a new mount kit. But back then when we did this, this is probably the fifth iteration of this, yep. and we just keep making changes depending on what happened. So the first one, it probably took us a week to do, and then we've just made upgrades over the years depending on what broke and what... Just uh, slowly do. refining them. Exactly. Amazing. Yeah, we give a lifetime warranty on them, so we get feedback in the, in, you know, stuff comes back to us when it breaks, so yes. we just make changes. Yeah. Um, I know we've said it before, but thank you so much for coming all the way to Australia and hand delivering these amazing things for us. Like, it's absolutely incredible. And I'm, I'm very excited to see how these actually fit into the car when we get up to that part. So, uh, steering racks in, subframes in, uh, waiting on a couple of bits for the motor over here. And then we can attach all this and actually kind of get it in there. Yeah. We're getting it in there today, aren't we? We are. It's going in today. As a matter of fact, what we can do next is we can actually 
do a little more engine bay prep and put the brackets in yeah. and the rear mount in and uh, that way we'll be ready for the motor once it's done. Let's do it. Okay. A quality mount kit like this can save a heap of time and although it is a bolt-in fit, Benny's going to weld an extra mounting bracket into the driver's side so that the K24 doesn't try and escape. We can then loosely bolt in the brackets ready for the mounts and the engine. Well, we've got the subframe in, and uh, we started laying the power steering lines, although we're missing a, a part, but mm -hmm. that'll come pretty quick. Uh, the mounts are in, uh, the brackets and the rear mount are in. Yep. Yeah, they're loose. We want to have them loose so that we can shift things around a little yep. bit Same to on. do it in. Yep. Uh, and uh, we basically are waiting for a few parts of the engine. Once we bolt all that stuff together, we can drop this down. Oh, wow. Have you had these before? Tim Tam? Never. Oh, I've never had one before. You write it? Oh, good. Yeah, man. All right, we've got a whole pack to get through while we wait for parts. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. So, uh, we're going fishing. Brian's come to Australia to go fishing <laughs> and play tennis, apparently, because he's a tennis coach, um, as well as a machinist. Anyway, the list goes on. But anyway, I dropped a bolt into the engine, I fished it out with this. He's now dropped one into the sump. I didn't tell him until now, I also dropped a tiny bit of silicon in there. Whoops. Where's the silicon net? <laughs> Although we might be from different sides of the planet and sound a bit different, how you going, mate? There's something special about a common goal of working on a project that nourishes the soul. You can learn so much from other people, especially when you're in the same room working on the same project. When we reached out to Brian and invited him to come to Australia and give us a hand, we thought maybe he'd fall over laughing, but instead he booked a flight and came straight over. And with jet lag turning his sleeping pattern on its head, he's shown up ready to join the Honda party. Now is this kind of enthusiasm just Hondas? Is it just VTEC that unlocks this kind of awesomeness? Or is it every kind of car? I don't know, but what I do know is that things are getting done fast. We are making heaps of progress, people. Thank you very much. Uh, I've just made this little tool here, which we're going to basically attach here and here, so that when we tighten all this down, that doesn't spin. We, we put it. We put this engine together. Martin's putting a clutch on it. Then we're going to throw it into this car, and it's going to be fast. It's a Honda. Of course, it's going to be fast. Anything else, Martin? No. Some people are coming to visit us too. Oh yeah, that. You might know them. You might know them. They'll be here soon. All right, let's keep pondering. Two more. Marty has a theory that you never ever throw away a bolt. And today it paid off because we pulled this K24 out of the Accord ages ago and subsequently lost the flywheel bolts. However, a dig through the bolt tray, which is filled with all sorts of Volkswagen, Subaru and random junk, we've actually found some. So I guess he's right about this, even though he's wrong about Nissans, but more on that later. We're putting on a new extreme clutch, which comes with a mad light and flywheel designed specifically to hold the torque of the big four cylinder that's revving to the moon. It's also worth mentioning that we sold the original Accord gearbox and bought ourselves an EP3 Civic gearbox, which is a six speed and has a limited slip diff. It bolts straight up to the K24. It looks a bit crusty on the outside, like it got pulled out of a swamp, but we're told the insides are good, so we'll see what happens. We need to remove the studs on the gearbox mount, but of course, they're seized in place because of the swamp, but after some heat and welding a nut to them, eventually we get them out. Next up, we are preparing our intake manifold. We've got new injectors, we're gonna put them in, put them on here, then we have a hybrid racing rail that's gonna to attach to there, and our fuel system will be one step closer to being done because VTEC requires petrol. You can use various Honda intake manifolds, but bonnet clearance can be an issue. An alternative is to use an aftermarket intake manifold like this Skunk 2 unit that they sent us. Combined with exhaust headers and aftermarket cams, we should see a good increase in power over the stock engine, and this makes the fitment a whole lot cleaner in the engine bay. We've installed some Raceworks injectors in a hybrid racing fuel rail, which comes with lines that will connect to our EK Civics fuel system, making this part of the process nice and simple. All right, I'm putting on this engine mount and then we can wrangle this K-Series into the Honda Civic. Oh, and donuts here. Yay! Yay! And I have for you 
uh, a little gift. Uh, not too many guesses what it is. It's Donutception. Wow. wow. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, can you help us put this thing in the car now? Would love oh, to. Sure. Yeah, here you go. Jeremiah, Zach, and their crew from the USA are in town to sample some Australian culture. And there's nothing more Australian than a K swap Civic. So they've dropped by to give us a hand. They actually did the opposite of this build recently with an expensive K-motor into a cheap Civic and Brian was there for that one too. He really is a boss. We're putting the new engine in the same way we got the old one out and as afternoon turns into evening, more mates arrive to flock to the Honda Flame. People just love these cars and can't get enough of this VTEC action. There it is. Yes. And that's been Donut Media. Thank you, boys. <laughs> See you later. Right. So, so nice to meet you. Thanks for coming down. Thank you, Thanks guys. Thanks so much, guys. That was great. Right. Thank Our you very much. <laughs> Now that the engine's bolted in, it's time to start throwing parts at this thing until it starts, runs and turns the front wheels. We're going to get drive shafts in, connect wiring and upgrade the fuel pump in the tank with a hanger made by Honed that helps prevent fuel surge. We are getting heaps done on this mad little Civic project. It's even starting to win me over. Just a little bit. Uh, next job over here, we have to remove the exhaust and shorten this to mate that up with our headers. And then I'm going to be installing this, a no-cut shifter. So this is going to be changing from a linkage system to a cable system. It's installed underneath the car. I've got to put some holes up under here so we can mount it. And it'll look super OEM, really, really neat. And this here is one of the parts of the recipe that, along with the mounts and the shafts, is kind of what makes this possible and what makes it a really, a really beautiful conversion. So that is the uh, next job for me now. We're also waiting on some more parts, uh, some knuckles, and then we're just diving in at some more, more K-Swap extravaganza. The headers we got from JDM Yard are designed specifically to fit a K24 in an EK chassis. Then we just need to connect that up to our existing system. There's a few shifter options to choose from, but we chose one that'll retain our factory center console because the inside of this car is so clean. While we sort that out, the guys are going to install a bunch of driveline and handling parts, including a white line roll center correction kit that improves the position of the control arms on a lowered car. The drive shafts that Brian brought with him from the USA are going in and they'll make the EP3 Civic gearbox to our early model hubs. It hasn't been entirely smooth sailing, but we are making some great progress. We didn't have our brake booster line. Uh, so we need this little one-way valve so that it works properly with the booster. We have to plumb it in down here somewhere because the engine used to be completely the other way. So a lot of stuff that you would consider you just use off the old engine, you can't. So we have to get that. We're going to make our shifter cables work because we've got all the brackets for the top of the gearbox. And I'm doing some coolant hoses and then we're going to run some wiring because that's kind of everything. If you're prepared to trade some of your time to save some money, there are ways to do this swap cheaper. Using a factory ECU and loom is one way. Using the original Accord gearbox and modifying the shifter location is another. This is one of the cleanest EK Civics we've ever come across, and many of the parts we've selected are huge time savers, meaning you can plug and play something that might otherwise take days to work on. This here is a tucked harness that we got off the internet. Tucked means it looks fancy, it looks nice and tidy. Honda people like that. This end is going to go into this, which is a plug and play connector, which is for a DC5 Integra. It's going to plug in just like that. And then this end is going to plug into the Haltech Elite 1500. This has already got a base map on it, uh, which means we should actually be able to start the car once it's finished. Like you should actually be able to plug this in. If you've got a Honda, all you need to do is plug this end in to your factory stuff and you go. You don't need any of this, but because we're going from scratch, we're using this to this to that. We've got ourselves a new engine harness as the Accord one was pretty cooked and these new ones are inexpensive. It gets you all new connectors which are labelled and can easily be terminated back to the ECU. Both the engine and the ECU think that they're in an EP3 Civic, not an older one. So we've also got a conversion harness that connects all that back to the EK body. If you've got the skills, wiring from scratch may end up simpler and neater, but it's a time consuming job. We're pushing hard to get this thing started as we want plenty of time to check it for leaks or any other issues before we head to the dyno. We are almost ready to start it, people, and this here is the engine conversion harness. It basically makes the car think that it is K-series, so this is gonna do car stuff down into the engine. So we also have something. a new radiator in there, and I've got a couple of hoses to plumb in, a little bit of coolant. Then we're gonna fill it full of fluids, try and plug all that in, and try and crank it and start it.
We are getting so very close to starting this car. I want to see oil pressure. Before I do that, I need to plug in our Haltech wideband. I need to plug in the ECU into the patch harness. And I've got the oil pressure and oil temperature sensor that has to be manually wired into the plug. Everything else is a direct plug-in. It's getting excited, but this is also the very nerve-wracking part. So let's see how we go. We're plugged in and nearly ready to go, but Brian has to head off to check out some race cars that are running his engine mounts. But we've promised to visit him next time we're in the USA. If you want to learn some mad nerdy Honda stuff, make sure you check out VTech Academy. Thank you very much, Brian. Good on you, man. Right I'm coming in for a much. hug. Good on you. Oh, let's, let's the master of VTech. Oh. Get on it. Thank you, mate. Thanks for coming yeah. You might have noticed we've been doing way more time lapses in our videos recently, and also we do use our phones sometimes to shoot video as well. That has been made way easier with this new product by Quadlock, which is actually really cool. It's a selfie stick and tripod, and it's compatible with the Quadlock cases that we use on our phone, Quadlock RS1 of the show. What's great about these, not only are they small and are they light, you actually get quite a bit of height out of it as well, and you can run it both in your landscape mode like this, so clicking it in and going like that, or you can lift that and run it on your vertical mode as well like that. So simply set it there, set up your time-lapse mode, uh, make videos on it, do whatever it is that you need to do. It's locked on there tight, pull the clip up, turn that round, bend all of that back down like this, goes back into the tripod, nice and light, in your pocket, and off you go. So a really, really cool product, and uh, big thanks to Quadlock for sponsoring Mighty Car Mods. There's a few more plugs to connect on the Haltech ECU and some basic wiring to sort out, and then we can turn the key. I'm gonna crank it and see if we've got any oil pressure. Cross your fingers. Doesn't sound great. Yeah, it definitely helps if you tighten the starter motor bolts. Let's try that again. The tension is building because we think we might actually be able to crank and start uh, this case swap Civic. So I managed to get all the wiring done pretty much myself, which I'm quite proud of. There's some patch harnesses there, but there's a fair bit of customization. I struggled to get the fuel pump to prime. I eventually found the fuel pump relay, patched in the Haltech, and now it is priming, which means we've got fuel pressure, we've got no leaks, uh, but we don't know what's gonna idle, we don't know what it's gonna do, but we're gonna crank it and find out. Some of the wiring for the body of the EK Civic has been fighting us. Triggering the fuel pump fans and a few other things has been challenging, but I think we've got it sorted. Right, here we go. Oh man, this feels good. The engine is alive and appears to be healthy. Now we can run it for a bit, bleed the cooling system, check that everything works, and then drive it out of Super Garage and get it ready for the dyno. Start her up, man, let's go. The K24 looks right at home in that engine bay. And although there's been a few challenges, we've done this in just a few days. Being that we've had all the suspension and subframe out, our next stop is gonna be a wheel alignment, so that once it's tuned, we can drive it on the road straight away. <laughs> Come down to DNA Autosport with our Civic. Uh, because we have the subframes out, new suspension arms, and all this sort of new stuff that's going into it, uh, we didn't want to drive it here. So we've trucked it here, and the boys are going to set it up for us, get the alignment perfect, so once that's done, we can go to the dyno. If the number one feature of a car is that it handles well, then there's a good chance that it may not be very fast in a straight line. Well, love them or hate them, Civics do handle really well, and it's helped by the fact that there's so much adjustment in the suspension. Don't forget, people didn't buy these in the 90s because they were gonna turn them into race cars, they bought them to go to the shops. This is the car you bought if you didn't like Corollas and you didn't wanna buy a WRX or an Evo. However, all that adjustment plus the suspension mods you can throw at these things makes them extremely capable on road and at the track. With its limited slip diff and all going well a huge bump in power, this thing should be an absolute blast to drive and we're excited to find out for ourselves just how far it can go. Now looking at this sheet, which is the result of your alignment, yeah. that looks really good. Yeah, the, the Civic is quite a good platform in itself. I mean, it does have that double A arm geometry that a lot of the GT3 style race cars uh, bring on board. So this is a GT3, you say? Essentially, okay, this cool. is a GT3, but uh, you know, let's call it an entry level GT3, Correct. if, if we can say it. that. Uh, but yeah, no, it is. All the arms that you have on the car allow us to, I guess, adjust everything that we need to adjust. So adjustability is fantastic. Um, from there, we're able to 
obviously center those subframes uh, and uh, and get the car exactly where we want it. Uh, anything else you can tell me about Civics? You like them? You hate them? What's oh, your look, feeling? No, they're fantastic. As far as an entry-level race car is concerned, the parts are really uh, attainable. They're obviously quite uh, inexpensive. And uh, again, from a suspension or chassis perspective, they're, they're great. If only they built a rear-wheel drive version. That'd be the only thing I'd ask for. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks so much. Thanks, Appreciate Marty. it. Cheers. Our alignment is sorted. Now it's time to visit Scott at Haltech, who I know is a fan of these engines. So I'm excited to see what magic he can work on the tune to get this thing VTECing into another dimension. I am down at Haltech with Scott, one of my favourite people in the world. He's one of the best tuners in the entire world and universe, in my opinion. And I've brought you, Scotty, one of your favourites. It's been a while, mate. I've been asking for this for how long? Years. Years. When are you bringing something with a K24 in it? Man, and everyone knows about it. That K like. I really like the way they drive. I like everything about yeah. this particular engine platform. So today, right, we get everything we want and you get to drive away in a car that, you know, it's not gonna make 400, 500 kilowatts. It's gonna drive so good and that's kind of what I'm about with this thing, how good it's gonna drive. Awesome. Well, shall we tune it? Yeah, let's just get into it. We're taking some time to make sure the cooling system is working as it's supposed to. Manufacturers like to run their engines on the hotter side to help with combustion, but too much heat means head gasket failures and detonation. The combination of coolant pressure which is regulated by the cap and the increased boiling point thanks to the coolant we put in it means it's a balance we have to make sure we get right. We can trigger our thermo fans with the ECU to cool it down when the car's not moving. What we're looking for is to make sure the cooling system recovers back to a stable temperature after we get it hot and bothered. The EK is loaded onto the dyno. Scotty's happy. We checked off some wiring. Uh, I think our speed sensor's not working, but aside from that, everything's pretty good. I was a bit worried about coolant temp because it was high, but it's been very consistent. The fans are coming on when they should. We've got a lot of air coming off this dyno fan as well to keep it cool. So I think, fingers crossed, we're ready to now run it up. So we're going to give it some load and just make sure everything's fine. And then once we've done that, straight into the power runs. We're feeling confident that this K24 is ready to show what it can do, but a loose scrub screw on one of the vacuum ports has made the idle go nuts. So tightening that up sorts it out, and we're now ready to experience all the lag and none of the boost. All right, Scotty. You ready? Sorry, I can't hear anything. Me neither, over the VTEC. <laughs> Are you ready? So Let's loud. do this. Okay. Ready to go. Happy. I think so. Ready to go. You ready? Let's do it. What RPM was 137 kilowatts on the first pull? That's what I wanted more. Magic. Magic. All what right. RPM was that? It looked like over 8,000. Uh, Did we get close to 8,000? We're going to go stock K24 A3. Okay. We're going to go for 8,200 somewhere else. Is that what it is? Yeah. With the oil gears and all the stuff to make it do it? You've got more cam angle in this as well, though, so that'll not so much for revs, but that'll give us a little bit more bottom end. Okay, cool. So what That's we need great, to man. Do... That's going to feel fantastic. I never thought I'd get that excited over 130 kilowatts, but knowing that you've got that capacity... It's got so much grunt down low. Exactly. It's just a really solid curve, and it's a light car. This one, we're going to rev her a little bit harder. Harder and even harder than that? Yeah. How come? Because it looked, it was nowhere near rolling over there. Oh, it really? Just, it's still, to still going. going. Yep. Here we go. Run number two. So smooth. Yeah. What? Are you making a funny noise there, like? No. Can you hear a rod? No. <laughs> is just crazy. It just keeps revving. It's pretty cool, eh? It's insane. Just Honda things. Yeah. That's sick. 
195 horsepower. Dude, that is knocking on the door of 200 horsepower. It's cool, In a eh? Civic. 145 kilowatts with no turbo. I've worked very hard to get those numbers in engines with turbos. <laughs> so, well that was a pretty good gain, right? <laughs> that's awesome, dude. So what should we do? Well, should we just call it and that's it? Yeah. Are you going for a moonshot, are you? Let's keep on, uh, <laughs> let's see how much further we can go. Scotty's got that look on his face. You know what? This has been happening more lately. They're good, man. They're this cool. has been happening more. I take that as a compliment. Quality Because it means mate. the stuff is coming through that he wants to lean on. He hasn't yet blown one up. But now that I've said that... Oh, the day's young. The day's young. We're on. Don't worry. Oh, Don't worry. man. You can understand why people put turbos on these, can't you? Oh, man. Add 10 pounds to this and it'd be like a monster. Dangerous, eh? Nice. Go. Yeah, loves it. That's the number, man. 160 at the wheels. And it's got an LSD in it. Really good power. That's great, uh, man. I mean, that's more power than a stock WRX back in the day. A stock S13 back in the day. There'd be Skylines that lucky to get to that, you know, like, and probably would on stock power. Evo, like, what? stock standard Evo 9, back in the day, at, at four wheels, admittedly. Yeah. 150 kilowatts at the wheels. And a Honda Civic with an NA 2.4 in it. That cost 1500 bucks out of a Honda Accord with some shit bolted onto it, 161 at the wheels. Man, and it's incredible. Magically, the gear ratio in this car, like yeah. the gearbox and how this works, that's why I keep like. I know. I, I know that you that told number. Me. This is a dangerous car on the road because zero to 100, it's like. Perfect. It's incredible how fast they are. And that's good power for a track. Like, yeah. that's serious power for a track. Like, you yeah. can get some speed. Yep, very, very impressive. Scotty, that was so awesome, man. Thank you so much. Mate, pleasure. You've done it again. Oh, very dude. impressive. I'm so um, stoked with how that worked out. The only thing that's left to do now is to go and drive the thing. All right, this is my first time in the Civic with VTEC. You don't even want to have the VTEC on when you turn in the corner, but you want it now. Holy shit! <laughs> it sounds like, great. It's like an angry swarm of bees, isn't it? The red line's like 8,200 or something ridiculous. It's so waspy. It just keeps going, man. It just keeps going. This exhaust is loud, I'll give it that, but it just keeps revving forever. Like, that's that's unreal. Dude, that's second gear. That's And it just gets better in every, every other gear after that. If every Honda felt and sounded like this, then I would understand it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I would actually understand it. That's yeah. fantastic. And it's a 2.4 litre engine, like it, but it just revs like crazy. It's got good capacity, 160 kilowatts. That's like more than so many stock cars. This would smoke a Golf GTI on the track, wouldn't it? Yeah, properly. Absolutely. Just obliteration. Yep. No, no lag, and admittedly no boost either, but no lag, which is cool. Like the bit I love about it is you can just be like that, pass yeah. throttle and just go stab it. It's, just, it's not, just on. Yeah, it's just on. Crazy, huh? So good. <laughs> we just have to watch that low sump. Yeah, true. yeah, that's true. Awesome, huh? There you go. On a Civic EK, how it should be done. Or is it? Or should you have a turbo D16? Or should you have a turbo B16? Or should you have a naturally aspirated V16 engine swapped into something else? All the questions that need to be answered, Martin. I think it's some, I mean, this is an excellent road car. Yeah, it's a bit loud, so it'll make the exhaust quiet or whatever. This is a good daily, you could drive this. Where this will shine is the track. Absolutely. over a year since we kicked off this project and people might have seen the K24 lurking in the back of Super Garage while we got all the parts and people together to make this happen. 
This is a perfect example of how far aftermarket parts have come since we started working on cars. There are clever people all over the world making quality and easy to install mods that can transform a car like this. And it is the people that all came together for a common cause that made it possible to create this K-swapped EK Civic that we think has turned out perfectly.